Denise Johnson and I am the Chief Sergeant at Arms, so I'm the woman who says so. <laughs> First of all, since this is a very significant day in our city and our country, I'd like you to rise with me and recite, recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand up. Ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So today we have come to the division contest where everybody has worked hard to get to this very defining moment. First of all, I want you to do is to please give all of our contestants a round of applause. We welcome you, and we want you to enjoy and engage and to just see what people have to offer because they've worked very hard. Now for some housekeeping things. This is very important. If you have any device that makes noise, buzzes, beeps, calls in and light forces, shoots off fireworks, rings, things, do any of that, please shut them off. Because if you do not shut them off and I hear them, me as the chief sergeant of arms, I may take them for you and I can't guarantee I'll give them back. <laughs> so please be mindful of that. But another thing is for restrooms. The restrooms, you go out the door and go around to the back, all the way back down that hallway. There's one on the left and there's one on the right. One for ladies, one for men. So you need to do that, do that at that time. Once the contest has started, please do not get up and leave because I have Dom on the back door and he might not let you back in if you leave. <laughs> please follow the rules. We are glad that you're here and we want to get this show started. Now I want to bring you the Grand Poobah of Division Governors, the Triple T, the DTM, and all those other kind of acronyms. I bring to you our Division Governor, Theo Travis. <laughs> Thank you. I have a mean sergeant at arms. I roll with a strong team. Don't test it. Okay. What I want to do, I'm for one, so excited that everyone is here. I know today is voting. I hope everybody got out to vote today. Just want to make sure if you did it, you make sure you try to run out as fast as you can after the contest. We're not going to have that going on right now. But what I want to do right now is I want to acknowledge all of the dignitaries. If you are a dignitary of District 30 right now, from the 2011-2012 year, could you please stand?
we got all that stuff out the way, let's get ready for this contest. And I got a wonderful individual that will be leading us for the rest of this event. <coughs> Toastmasters and distinguished guests, please help me welcome our Madam Toastmaster for the evening, Mrs. Melissa Newport.
We have the present, as I said before. Life's too short. And it's a hard thing to do not to take things seriously. But why not? Why take things seriously? Because you're only, it's only detrimental to yourself. And I thank you, everybody. Our next contestant is Dan McCartney. If you could go back in time and talk to yourself at the age of 10, what advice would you give yourself? If you could go back in time and talk to yourself at the age of 10, what advice would you give yourself? Dan McCartney. When I was 10 years old, I was about to start at middle school. And at my middle school, you had to make two very big decisions going into your first year. Which math class you were going to take, and what foreign language you were going to take. I got into the math class I wanted to, there was no issue there. But I fought tooth and nail with my parents over what language. They wanted me to take Spanish, I wanted to take French. I had no good reason for this. <laughs> this was sheer 11-year-old intractableness. I didn't want to take Spanish because it was different. I wanted to take French because I wanted to be the guy who didn't take Spanish along with his peers. <laughs> and we fought, and we fought, and we fought, and I won, because I'm stubborn. And then, 10 years later, I regretted the decision. We were on a vacation in Mexico, I couldn't so much as ask where the nearest restaurant was, but I could read the works of Kangu in the original. <laughs> <laughs> and if I could deal, tell myself anything at the age of 10, I would tell myself, years from now you're going to regret this decision. You're going to wonder what it was that made you want to be so willfully different from everyone else. Don't do that. <laughs> it sounds flippant. It sounds a bit simplistic, but it's useful. People spend so much time trying to fit in and trying to match the expectations of others when they know, really, there's something they want. And there's very little stopping you from getting it, barring laws or medical conditions. <laughs> if I could tell myself anything, it would be be yourself, embrace it, and learn a little bit of Spanish before you go to Mexico. <laughs> it's not that hard. <laughs> Thank you.
next contestant is Dave Akashni. You could go back in time and talk to yourself at the age of 10. What advice would you give yourself? If you could go back in time and talk to yourself at the age of 10, what advice would you give yourself? Dave Katashni. If I could go back to myself at the age of 10 and give myself a piece of advice. First of all, thank you for allowing me the chance to share with you a little bit of wisdom that I've picked up along the way. If I could go back to myself at the age of 10, what I would be staring at, unfortunately, is a fat kid. And I'm not talking about a sort of fat kid. This guy was very overweight. And the advice that I would give to Dave is I would look at him and I would say, Dave, what you do today is going to affect you for the rest of your life. So from this moment on, take a look at yourself and you know, I'm not saying lose weight, I'm not saying go on a crash diet. What I'm saying is take a look at yourself and really think about the choices that you make today. Who do you want to be in 10 years? Do you want to be someone who's always behind, who's always holding up the rear? Or would you rather be a leader? And so, you know, I would say to Fat Dave, <laughs> and that's, that's, not, that's not my nickname. That was a nickname that people had given to me. <laughs> but, but, but I would say to myself, put, you know, put yourself out there, Fat Dave. Put yourself out there. And in gym class, like, take the ball, throw the balls, run the extra mile, go the distance, and move around. You know, one of the things, that, one of the pieces of advice I got today was that motion creates emotion. And I wish I would have known that then, because it would have given me so many opportunities to actually put myself into the moment, into the present, and not worry about what people are going to think about me tomorrow or the next day or when I go to high school or when I go to college, but what am I doing right now? What am I giving you know, to my community, to my friends, my family, myself? So I would say today, you know, I'd say, you're great the way that you are, but we know it, you know, old, older Dave knows it, but you've got to know it, and you've got to believe it today. That's what I would say to myself. Thanks. Our next contestant is Lisa Roberson. If you could go back in time and talk to yourself at the age of 10, what advice would you give yourself? If you could go back in time and talk to yourself at the age of 10, what advice would you give yourself? Lisa Roberson. I would give to myself would be that you are stronger than you, you'll be stronger than you ever know. Life has ups and downs and as a 10 year old you have no idea what it's about, you're having fun, but there's some of us who had childhoods that life was a little bit more difficult. And during that childhood you learned that you were tougher than you are. I was the oldest 
and so I had two younger sisters. And as the oldest, I had a lot of responsibility. And at the time, I didn't think about being a kid. I just thought about I need to help my parents. I need to be strong for my mother, for my father, to watch my sisters because they both had to work. And then I realized that it will, my life won't always be this way. I will have opportunities and I will have fun. But my main job was to do the best for my parents. And by doing that and, and being the oldest and taking care of my sisters, I learned a great deal of responsibility. So as I was older, became older, I was able to handle a lot more things that happened in my life. And so what I learned is that I was strong then as a child, and I'm even stronger now as an adult because of the experiences that I had as that child. And that, you know what, the best is yet to come, and no matter what happens, you can't overcome, and life will be better. Thank you. Our next contestant is Maggie Fox. If you could go back in time and talk to yourself at the age of 10, what advice would you give yourself? If you could go back in time and talk to yourself at the age of 10, what advice would you give yourself? Maggie Fox. have something for yourself and it doesn't quite feel right for you. But what about, what about friendships? That's a good one, right? I mean, I, oh, I've got so many friends I can think of. Like, I imagine in your lives, there's got to be at least half a dozen friends that you at one point were like, oh, I wish I would have stayed in touch with them. And then there's the friends you have today. So that's the second thing right there I can think of right away, friends. Family. Family is the third one that comes to mind. Now, my grandparents passed away when I was really young, and if I had known at 10 they were going to pass, and I'd lose them in the next seven years, I would have done everything. Back when my grandmother was on AOL TV, and she's sending me these forwards, like, hi, Matthew, here's this next crazy thing going on. I would actually call her instead of emailing back and really try to get that connection going there. Oh. Going back in time, 10 years old, that's a tough one, ladies and gentlemen. But for me, oh yeah, getting in on that Google stuff, that would be a big one. I would be all over that. <laughs> getting together with friends, getting together with family, combining all those to today. I mean, think about it for yourself. If you could be 10 again, what would you say to yourself? Madam Council.
contestant today is Maddie Ray. If you could go back in time and talk to yourself at the age of 10, what advice would you give yourself? If you could go back in time and talk to yourself at the age of 10, what advice would you give yourself? Maddie Ray. I like the idea of going back. Fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, judges, and my competition. <laughs> if I can go back in time, when I was 10 years old, the first, the first advice I'll give myself is to take care of your hair. <laughs> See, when I was 10, I always looked up to my father as most of us. And I, and I could admire the amazing hairstyle he had. But I didn't realize that by the time I'll be 25, I'll be losing some of that touch. <laughs> Among other things, hair is not the only thing on my mind. There's one more thing I like to tell myself, is to remind myself that when you are 10, everyone tells you life is full of potentials. You can be a pilot, you can be a president, you can be a Toastmaster. You can be anything that you want. But by the time you are 25 or 29, you realize you can still do everything that you want, but your time is running out. <laughs> the time can be running out in terms of your looks, it could be in terms of your health, or it could be just in terms of your wear out, the daily routine of life, the uh, urgency to pay off your student loan, the urgency to pay off your car loan, or anything like that. Dreams are best imagined when you are a child because you see a big future in front of you to achieve it. At the age of 10, I wasn't confused by the problems in life or I wasn't even attracted to girls. <laughs> I really wasn't nervous about studies. All I wanted to do was to go out and play. Today, Again, I want to go out and play, but I have to think about my work. I have to think about uh, girls. I have to think about career. There are challenges, and I, I always have to think about that. So, Maddie, when you're 10 years old, be smart, be energetic. Thank you.
Toastmaster. All ballots have been collected. Thank you very much. the results and tabulating the results of this wonderful contest. I'd like to take one minute just to congratulate our contestants on a very, very, very good contest. <laughs> one of the nice things about being up here is I just get to listen to you and I don't have to judge you. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> um, so while they are out, we are going to have our esteemed Division Governor come back to the podium and share a few announcements with us. And when he is done and the ballot counters are back in the room with the results, uh, we'll have a 10 minute break. And after that point, we will move into the international contest. And Mr. Theo Travis. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. I'm back. I missed you just that quick. <laughs> I'm here to give announcements. One thing that my team understand is as a leader, one of the great things you get to do is delegate. It's one of the favorite things that I learned to do. So, what I'm going to do at random, I'm going to pick one of my favorite people to talk about our upcoming spring conference. So what I would like for each and every one of you to do is to help me welcome our madam. Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training, Joan Moore. Yeah. She didn't know she was going to be calling her. Mr. Division Governor, fellow Toastmasters, the Toastmaster is always prepared. <laughs> <laughs> when is the spring conference? April 20th. will take place and on Saturday the winner from this division will be going up against the best of District 30 and competing in international speech competition as well. Let's show up in big numbers and support our people. I know we got some foreigners inside of this room that's coming from the other divisions, but we ready. We ready. We ready. And meanwhile, while you guys are looking on the back of your brochure, I want to bring to your attention something that is true and dear to my heart. Our 2012 Summer Toastmasters Leadership um, Institute training. I know people are like, oh man, training again? Yeah, training again. <laughs> so, for the officers that are holding office right now, you don't have to worry about it. You can be a spectator if you would like or help out because we always need help. Toastmasters, we love help. That's what we're here for, to help each other out. But also, for the new officers, which is something that all of you should be thinking about in your clubs, in your home clubs, you should be thinking about electing your new officers. Because when you elect your new officers, you need to drill this into their heads. That the, if the information on the back is going to be on a Saturday, June 23rd, 2012, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Chicago Marriott Suites at O'Hare. We have had functions there before. 8585 West Higgins Road, Chicago, Illinois, 60631. At the bottom, you see the link that you can type in your browser at your internet if you're internet savvy. If you're not, 
call on someone. And with that information, that's about it. What we're going to do right now is we're going to have exactly 10 minutes. And I am going to stick on time, so 10 minutes. I want everybody back in here. I want you all to enjoy the food that's on the outside. Let's give congratulations to FRB Shine Masters first because they got the